Good day. In this video, we're going to look at a few possible questions you can run into in regards to translations of a cubic function. For the purpose of this video, we give you the sketch of the cubic function, we give you the equation of the cubic function, we give you the coordinates of the stationary points, I'm going to call it the turning points. The question then says, determine the value or values of k for which this plus k equals to zero. We'll have three different distinct roots. And then secondly, we'll have one root. If you look at the front part of this equation, you'll see it looks exactly the same as the equation of f of x. So it's asking you take, to take f of x and shift it up or down. Now, if you take this cubic function and you work out its x-intercept, in other words, you equate this equation to zero, you'll find one solution, x is rounded off to 5,13. You don't have to do that. So it only has one root, you can call it the answer or so the solution. The shape of this cubic function is determined by the front part of the equation. The minus 10 again is your y-intercept, which we wrote in there, not necessary, and that moves the shape up or down. So if you write this equation down equal to 0, it's actually asking where is f of x equal to where y is equal to 0. So where is the blue graph? equal to where y is equal to 0, that's at c, so x at c is rounded off to 5,13. They're not asking us to work out anything, we're just explaining that this graph is equal to where y is equal to 0 at one place. So this cubic function has one root. We'll show you two methods how to solve this problem. Firstly, you can look at it graphically. The black line you see over here is the original f of x that we have, and it has one root. If you shift it up, looking at the y values of your stationary points, if you shift it up 5 units, it will touch the x-axis and we will have 2 roots. But then we will have 2 equal roots and a separate one. So we have to move it up more than 5, so that it crosses twice and once on this side. That's 3 times. But we can't move it up too far. So we move it 37 units up, it's going to miss the x-axis again. We'll only have 1 root on the left. So k must be bigger than 5, but less than 37, to give us three distinct roots. So we move it up more than 5 units, that this stationary point is above the x-axis, but not too far up, that this stationary point misses the x-axis again. You may message me at this number to arrange a personalized online lesson in mathematics. If you understood the first technique, stop the video and don't look any further. Here is a totally different technique. So here we have our equation of f of x, and they asked us, this equation plus k equals to 0 must have three distinct roots. Then we take the plus k to the other side, and we have this f of x equal to minus k. So we have two graphs now, the f of x and y equals to minus k. And we want these two graphs to intersect with three roots or three answers. Then I draw a line at the one stationary point for y equals to minus k and at the other stationary point where y is equal to minus k. The top line is then y equals to minus 5 and the, top one, the bottom one is y equals to minus 37. So this minus k lies everywhere between minus 5 and minus 37. Look at this red line, it will cut this f of x at three distinct places. So we can write this minus k is bigger than minus 37 but smaller than minus 5. Then we divide by a minus 1 right through to get the k clean. You divide by a minus, your sign swap around, and you get your answer k is bigger than 5 and k is smaller than 37. You can leave your, leave your answer like that or you can rewrite it from small to big. Just to recap, you take this equation, you break it up into two separate functions. The original equation and y equals to minus k. Then you draw lines at the stationary points and you see where must this line go to cut this f of x three times. Because they want three distinct roots. Then you see it is between minus 5 and minus 37. Put it into an inequality and solve the inequality for k. Stop the video and get your brain around this. Second part of the question was, what is the value or values of k for this equation to have only one distinct root? 
Then we take the k to the other side. We have the original equation and y equals to minus k, which is the two dotted lines we have over there. For these maroon lines, to only cut the black graph once, it has to move up over here, away from minus 5, and down over here from minus 37. So firstly, minus k must be bigger than minus 5. Divide by minus 1 on both sides, the signs swap around, so k should be smaller than 5. Or minus k must be smaller than minus 37. To get k positive, you divide by a minus on both sides, so k is bigger than 37. Final answer, to get one root only, k has to be smaller than 5 or k has to be bigger than 37. Please stop the video and get your brain around this one. Just finally, another question you might run into with translations. They can say if the graph of f is translated shifted two units to the left and one unit up to find a new graph h. Write the equation of h. You don't have to simplify h. We have the original equation of f of x. If you move two units left, you replace x with x plus 2. If you move one unit up, you just plus 1 to the whole equation. So to find h of x, we do this to f of x. Replace all the x values with x plus 2. And you just add on a 1 at the back. There is the new equation of h of x. They didn't ask us to simplify it. Please stop the video and get your brain around this question. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked the video and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy mathematics.